What's up, fellas? We're on the infield of the Daytona International Speedway doing a little uh, tour here with Uncle Dale, checking everything out, cruising around in his 76 Jeep. And it's they just put an announcement up, high wind of storms. Put, bring your awnings down because we got like a tornado coming or something, and it's supposed to get an inch of rain. So the racing tonight's going to be off the hook. Stay tuned. There's this packed full of killer rigs like this one right here. It's stackers. Look at this thing, 22-inch rims, stacker. It's by a company called factorytransports.com aluminum trailers this is called the revelation one of the night this is one of the nicest ones we saw here just absolutely freaking beautiful but everywhere you look this is where but this is the overflow parking where do you see all the big rigs inside there guys this is the, the spirit of 76 right here this is dale's 1976 jeep it's got a 403 cubic inch amc motor out of a uh, javelin right javelin. javelin and it's absolutely pristine the frame up restoration Hers like a kitten, so we've been bombing around in this this morning, checking out the pits. I wanna, I wanted to do a pit tour for you guys, so you could see. This is one of my favorite things to do when we're at Daytona. Is just drive around and check out all the bikes, check out all the rigs, and there's people from all over the United States of America here. That, that's called Lake Lloyd right here. We're on the infield. That's turn four down on the far end. I think that's, that's the one that Dale Earnhardt hit the wall on. Yes, sir. And uh, over here is turn one um, on the high banks of the Daytona. International Speedway, but the people that are here are real enthusiasts, man. You see the coolest shit. Like, look at this Jeep right here. Big rigs, Jeeps, killer motorcycles, and you see the trends here. Every year is something different. There's a lot, been a lot of pit bikes. A lot of pit bikes, uh, 125s. What's that rig that you got, Joe? Wow, the Honda Monkey. The Honda, let's go through here. Yeah. The Honda Monkey. There's um, a lot of that, you know, so I got my, that's my rig right there. That's the Featherlight with the F450, and there's my XR650. That's what I'm running uh, for around the pits. I run the XR650, and then um, we uh, ride to Harley, obviously, uh, on the open road. But look at the rigs here, man. This is the, uh, if you're into, into motorcycles, you need something to haul them in from when you're up from up north, and this is where you see all the best of the best. This is a full house DRV. That's considered to be one of the best toy haulers in the industry right there that thing's absolutely dream trailer right there north of 140 oh yeah north of 140 and they're absolutely freaking spectacular um you'll see tons of killer trucks here it's almost like a truck show too because you got to tow these bigs right right so there's a duramax denali an f-350 lariat and a dodge ram cummins turbo diesel and an old, old 7.3 right here right here is what they call testosterone drive testosterone, testosterone drive <laughs> this is where you park yeah. it and i'm parked in the number two spot so <laughs> and i don't like it i want to be number one <laughs> <laughs> just packed full of big rigs man you know these these are all good american patriots here that work their ass off and they celebrate their uh, efforts by coming here with the people they love in the things that they love and uh you'll see nothing but smiling faces here man the people everybody's having a blast it's been pouring rain out so everybody's inside right now if you're wondering where they all are they just were like i said came over to loudspeaker said the shit was gonna hit the fan and it did there was a big black tornado cloud over there um looks like it's blown over here's there's a nice rig right there what's happening fellas Woo -hoo! work and play road warrior that's that, i've always liked those road warriors so those are nice then you get a lot of the what I could call, you know, consumer grade ones that are in the fifty to eighty thousand dollar range, um, towed by by diesels. So we are, you've seen maybe a tenth of what what is here right now. We can only because of COVID they changed everything. Masks are not required, which is a breath of fresh air for me, literally. But uh, um, not having to wear a mask, I uh, really don't don't like that. Um, but uh, they lifted the, the, the COVID mask wearing restrictions, but there are lots of other restrictions, like the ticket sales. They actually sold maybe um, a quarter as many tickets this year, and you can't go through the whole pit area. They got it blocked off. I guess they figured they want to keep the, the COVID on that side, on that side. <laughs> In, over. Inside down here is where the high dollar spots are, where the big boys park their race vehicles. Where we're out here in the uh, we're in no the, budget yeah, spots. We're, we're, we're in the, uh, what are we wrong to say? <laughs> uh, <laughs> over there, those are, see those are the Kawasaki Monster Energy. Let me zoom in. Oh, I'm over there, Kawasaki Monster Energy. The big rigs over there. Those are the factory pits. Thor, Yamaha, K1000, 
Kawasaki, Suzuki, Honda, KTM. They're all in there now because it is uh, practice has already begun. They've already been riding, and the qualifiers will start later this afternoon. I think around two or three o'clock. It'll be on TV. I think starting at six East Coast time. So tune in tonight. Uh, if you don't have it on cable, get you can get it on Peacock. P E A C O C K. They they live stream it. This is a nice rig right here. Look at this. I, I, I had to do a lap around this last night. That's a, an older vehicle, but yeah, very a, well kept. Super nice. Like That's a clean GMC top kick tone, an ATC stacker. That thing, that's probably a $150,000, $200,000 trailer would, my, would be my bet. Just beautiful. ATC, as far as I'm concerned, being at Airstreams, as far, the American flag. God bless America. God bless the United States of America. So ATC in my opinion, it is like one step down from Featherlight, but they produce a lot more trailers. They have a lot more high quality, yet consumer grade. By that I mean they're all made out of aluminum. There's no momentum. They probably sell the most toy haulers than anybody, but um, they're made out of wood uh, and balsa wood, and, and they, they're gonna fall apart in 15 years, guaranteed. My trailer is a 2001, uh, that was Dale's old, tra old trailer. I bought it from him um, a couple years ago. My trailer is 21 years old, and it's, structurally perfect so it costs more to buy an all aluminum uh, but uh, I think it's worth it so the big thing people need to keep in the back of their mind if they're ever gonna buy an RV a motor home, a toy hauler besides our FRP which is a fiberglass panel fiberglass reinforced reinforced plywood right. FRP yep that's and, what that's what these are made out of that and that has, that's what that one's made out of made out of basically uh, plywood with fiberglass on it. Yeah, that, that, that one there is still. Uh, there's not many RVs that have aluminum siding anymore. Uh, and if you ever want to buy a good one, hunt for your favorite one that has the aluminum sides exterior. That will last you a lifetime. If yep. you buy the FRP, uh, you'll probably be working on it before you get it paid for with your monthly payments. Yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Um, they are what I call consumer grade, which is, you know, you can buy one for 50, 60, 80,000, expect to get five to 15 good years at it, on it, but it ain't gonna be like mine that's 20 years old that's basically structurally brand new. And, and, and we don't have any problems with it. Like, I've had, I've had brand new diesel pushers back in 99, I bought one, when Junior was a year old, his mom said, I ain't going to the races anymore unless you get me a coach. So uh, I, I wanted my I wanted Junior to come with me, and I needed her to come because we were still married. So we went out and bought a, a diesel pusher, consumer grade, and it spent six months of the first year in the shop. It was falling apart. I learned early on that just because it's new doesn't mean you're not going to have problems. So, um, And I've had all kinds of rigs since then. Down the back road here. And uh, I found that a new diesel pickup truck uh, or newer, anything you know, in the last 10 years, or even an older one, the pickup trucks are built to a very high quality standard uh, or a medium duty truck, a commercial truck. That's another phenomenon. They're actually making campers with, uh, they call them super C's. They put a tractor trailer front end on it. You'll probably see one in here, and we, we will see one in here. And on the back, it's a camper. So you get the most, best of both worlds, the serviceability. They charge 150 an hour to work on class A motor coaches with the engine in the back. It's 150 bucks an hour or less for one that's got the engine up front because you can actually get to it and all the parts are available at all the truck stops. So anything that's got a commercial application, i.e. hauling, heavy hauling, and uh, you know pickup trucks, they're, they're built to be beat on every single day. So if you get one of those and then get a fifth wheel behind it, um, even a consumer grade fifth wheel, you're probably gonna have a lot less hassle and bullshit than you will dealing with a coach like that. Um, our neighbor, that's parked with next to us here just bought one and he's having all kinds of problems with it right though yeah yeah if you don't buy all the warranty you can on a diesel butcher you're shooting yourself in the foot if you want to keep it any, any oh, hold on, slow, slow. that's a prevo right there that's a commercial grade bus designed to go a million miles now these started at like a million dollars for a new one so only the extremely wealthy get those but um that is a serious piece of equipment um big big rig you're gonna need need to know where you're going on that one it's third guess what the sides are made out of aluminum aluminum now this next rig here is considered to be one of the highest quality toy haulers on the market it's a Lux TH I heard there was some issues because they ramped up production and uh, they're having some quality control issues but look at the look at the quality of this thing man and it's got a nice red 
diesel Dodge Dual he's hauling it. That's a stunning toy hauler. Then you got the stackers, cargo mate stackers. What that has two levels. It has a, a lift inside of it that lifts you up to the second level. So anything you could possibly dream of uh, of hauling a motorcycle in or camping in, you're gonna see at Daytona. Not just here, anywhere you go in a 20 mile radius of here, the campgrounds are packed. There's a half a million motorcyclists here today. 500,000 motorcycles are here and the family. So there might be three quarters of a million people that show up for bike week. And, it, and it's more than a week, it's it's 10 days, right Del? Yeah, yeah, it'll be, uh, this is the 80th year, right? Yeah, 80th yeah. annual. I was here for the 50th, 30 years ago. Older demographic, there's a Seika 900 right there. That's a nice That's one. not something you see every day. So, yeah. Older demographic, um, basically the guys that were here 30 years ago are still here. But we're all, here's two momentums right here. These are probably the most popular, most widely sold, best-selling toy hauler. Look at that black one with the nice. side thing. Those are, now if you were to build that on a feather light, you'd be looking at a half a million dollar rig. You can buy a momentum for a hundred, hundred and twenty thousand, but you gotta understand, hey, it's a five to ten year solution before maybe fifteen. Uh, they're just, just not built for the same quality. I would be uh, thrilled to have one. Uh, I don't have an extra hundred thousand dollars in my pocket, but if I, if I was gonna be a full timer um, down here for the whole winter, that's what you'd want—a big toy hauler. In my opinion, the toy hauler with a pickup truck dually is one of the best applications because then you have your truck to go to the bank, go to the gym, go shopping, and you can also haul a cargo trailer. Guys, we're looking to buy bikes. If you have any bikes for sale, give us a call or text us, 860-916-9784. Our next big auction is April 25th. We're looking to blow the blow the roof off of our last auction. We did 175 bikes. We want to become the next Mecham East. Uh, Dale and I will be down here with a crew of guys next bike week. Uh, with our, we'll have our shit together. We'll have We'll have the bankroll and we'll have the trailers and we will be buying. That's that's probably my favorite consumer grade. I'm gonna call it consumer grade, the, the DRV, but but it's a, really is a cut above. It, it's at the higher, th that is the upper echelon in my eyes of the best toy hauler you can get. I'm even gonna put it above the Lux because I saw a little bit of quality control issues, like things not lining up right in the Lux uh, when I was studying that product. But um, this is what I was talking about right here. Slow down a little bit, Dev. This is what I, what's called the uh, Super C. It's a badass, biggest Volvo tractor trailer you can get. Now, if it was me, I'd want a Pete or a Kenworth, but I'm Catholic America, so and I got heavy D here, and you won't let me buy in on that Bud America. So. Nothing but a Peter <laughs> so, Maybe look, a Kenworth. But look at that badass ride right there. That's a, that's a real deal. 500 horse, and you can haul any size trailer want with it. But they're a handful getting in and out. You know, they're, they're so freaking big, you know. You got to plan your plan your every move. I got it simple here with my little my little uh, tiny home. That's all I need, man. My little my my little fifth wheel. I love that thing. So if, if you're in in the used RV, I've been playing with RVs ever since I was uh, well, let's just say 1966. Yep. My dad uh, was an RVer and used us kids to be his RV mate, but. In all those years, I, I learned an awful lot about what is bad, what is uh, indifferent. But if you want to find a used, nice RV, find yourself a older Holiday Rambler. Yeah, those they don't make them no more, they right? Th yeah, I got the last year made in a in a fifth wheel toy hauler, and uh, it's the strongest frame. It the exterior is uh, is aluminum. Um, the inside is real wood. It isn't particle board, and they were way over a hundred grand new in uh, what year is mine? Two thousand and eight. I, I think when they was, stopped uh, making them. I, I think two thousand and eight uh, was the last year that they did the toy haulers. What can you but pick one up for a used? I was able to buy that one for forty eight thousand, and it was like new, and uh, it's quality. It will last forever. It's not a big lighter that you use it. When it's done, you throw it away. A lot of RVs become junk because of disposable. A simple, it's a consumer grade disposable right, product. Right, right. But but what causes that is they get a little leak in the roof. By the time it surfaces in the interior, it's already did all the damage. That from that day forward, you you get what is called delamination with all the wood. So once that starts, it's just a time bomb. 
if you get one that's made out of aluminum and it has a, a one-piece sealed roof and you seal it every year, uh, you can rebuild anything that would go wrong with it because it has a quality triple frame. It has an aluminum exterior that's glued together. The graphics on mine are uh, the original ones and they're in perfect condition. So if you find an old Holiday Rambler, feel comfortable that you got something that you can keep more than 10 years, you know, 15 years. Yeah. So I just wanted to throw that in there and uh, thanks to my dear old dad that forced us to be RVers at Kids, we learned an awful lot. Yeah, you don't you don't Thank need you. to you don't need to buy brand new. No, no. Well, matter of fact, I don't recommend buying brand new because as soon as you roll it off the lot, you're gonna lose what? Twenty percent. Twenty percent plus your six yeah. percent tax of so almost a third. So you spend a hundred grand on a rig, the next year it's worth thirty. F that. Go out and buy a rig for thirty thousand. That's gonna be worth thirty two five years from now if you take care of it. You buy the right rig and take care of it. It's an investment just like your house. You just gotta be smart. You gotta do your research. And it's a you know it's a buyer's market if you got the money. Yeah. Um, you know the dealers aren't going to give them jack for it on a trade in. They're going to rape them, you know, and pay them half half or or, or thirty percent less. And and uh, so if you're looking at used ones and you find any water damage on the inside, walk away. Yeah. Say, th thank you very much. That's how we walked away from that the, the Arlen Nest Peter, yeah. Peterbilt rig. And you know it it will only get worse. And uh, once it is done and it's all swelled up you got a mess so uh look at the internet surf around and uh don't be afraid to find an old holiday rambler lots of forums out there you can check out grand design has their own forum um where they post all you know all kinds of info about them and there's there's definitely a a lot of information out there go on youtube google the unit you're looking for talk to some owners before you buy it but if you want to get to daytona you can you can come on your van your in your uh, tent you can pup tent like we did on the other side there a few years ago you camp in the back of your trailer but if you're gonna full time and go to a lot of races and events like we do you got to have a rig so get the right one enjoy it you only live once so this is our rig it's uh, got 22 foot on the floor and eight foot on the top it's a built in 2001 I think right yeah, April of 2001, so it's 20 years old. Look at look at how nice it is. I put Vaseline on this for the ride down so it wouldn't get all messed up by the salt because usually the tags get messed up. But this has been well taken care of by Dell before he got it, and we've been living in it for eight weeks, and my boys uh, in the detail shop and I, we, we'll wax it up nice and polish all aluminum, but I haven't had a single damn problem with it, not one. And, and it's aluminum on the outside. It's huck bolted like a Peterbilt cab. This thing will last forever. Uh, it's built to last. This is a million mile trailer, just like a free boat. It's built, built to last a million miles. As long as you don't smash it up, it'll last forever. And it's kind of cool. You got the battery box up here. You got your propane tanks. I got my XR650 sitting outside. Underneath it, you got like a little carport garage right here for two bikes. Tractor, trailer, landing gear. Yeah, it's the same thing they put on a tractor trailer. Yes, that's so, the same stuff we use. This ain't the cheesy consumer grade right. flimsy stuff that they put on. When I like, ordered it, we said go for broke, right? Well, I don't <laughs> want to point out anybody's stuff, but um, if you look over at that that rig over there, those are a little like little fifty dollar flip down jacks, you know, a hundred dollar whatever, just hand crank. Uh, you know, I and, and you don't have to spend a fortune to buy a rig like this, man. Uh, knew this would be extremely expensive i think in 01 it was what 52,000 in 01 53,000 53, in 2001 today it would probably cost you 75 85 but you can find these nice used ones online for in the 30,000 range um, if you can but the thing is people don't usually sell them they keep them forever and uh hand them down to family members or whatever or keep there's always somebody who's looking to buy it already so you just don't see too many of these they didn't make too many of them these aren't commercially made it by the thousands they're all custom made hi honey you ready for the gym yet i'm ready to go pump some iron hell yeah <laughs> so let's go You're, okay let's go so was, these are some parts that we left down at tony's tony johnson's i just picked them up so there were a little uh swap meet going on behind the trailer here got the harley logos on the back well thanks for watching we having a good time here at daytona ready to go i'm ready i've been ready okay thanks for watching guys and uh, as always, God bless the United States of America.